referee calling for the ball again. And as we welcome you tonight for the first time on Ireland's second television channel, we say, Burbanach the Wati Yado, Gachir na Hayden. Is Nijeg Shokta was hooked on Vlina Ta'an? The Eigen Spree Bui, Kelora on Rail Trial Life Day, Agus Honik Puchin on Kate Skonan Askelga and Mach Ibiktalana na Hayden. Well, in fairness, that's not entirely true. There had, in fact, been two theatrically released films in the Irish language in the preceding decades, Misha Era in 1959 and Saoirse in 1961. These two films were more or less two parts of a documentary series which roughly covered Ireland's revolutionary period between 1916 and 1922. Although Puchin can't technically boast that it was the first Irish language film to be released in cinemas, it was certainly the first to boast a fictional story. Barely a feature film clocking in at just over one hour, Puchin almost plays like an early episode of Breaking Bad where, instead of Met, the characters are brewing Puchin, and instead of Albuquerque, it's set in Connemara, and instead of the DEA, the characters are being pursued by one solitary Garda, and instead of a shootout, they just lob potatoes at each other. It's a quaint little film which does gain traction in the second half when the revenge storyline really takes over, but as much as I want to believe the 30 km an hour car chase down rural Ireland had a profound effect on the trajectory of world cinema, the movie itself is nothing truly groundbreaking. What it did succeed in was laying the groundwork for future films. It said, hey, did you know it's possible to make compelling narrative films in the Irish language? Come come join us over here in the Cool Kids Lounge. Satisfied with its work, Puchin laid back, relaxed, and waited for others to join them. And then, for the next three decades, Dada. Achuan Tijikar. Originally television the Gaelgo or Tina G until its rebranding in 1999, TG Car is the only public service television station in the Irish language. Established in 1996, the station has since grown in popularity and acclaim, with many viewers and critics praising its original programming, often comparing it favourably to Ireland's flagship TV channel RTE. Being the only dedicated station for a minority language in Ireland, TG Car can be accurately depicted as the underdog of the Irish TV broadcasting industry. Underfunded when compared to other stations, TG Car consistently releases acclaimed documentaries and mini drama series. It feels like the station is truly trying to live up to its slogan, Shul Ella, meaning another perspective, and it has since its foundation, being one of the first stations in Europe to air the uncensored director's cut of The Exorcist, even before any UK channel followed suit. It's also been acknowledged that many of TG Car's dramas feature more daring and risque plotlines than their English language counterparts in Ireland, and get away with it precisely because of the fact that they're in Irish, and therefore have an inherently smaller viewership than mainstream programming. Personally, I think TG Car is the criminally underrated goldmine of television in Ireland. There are just so many hidden gems on this channel, with its flagship drama Ross Naroon being a particular guilty pleasure of mine since doing the Leave Insert exams a few years back. And although this video is not about TG Car, well, not entirely, it's hard to deny the incredible, unprecedented impact this station has had on the trajectory of Irish language cinema within the past decade. Now, recent developments are something I'll cover more in a little bit, but there's a strange period of Irish language film I want to cover first, which spanned from the turn of the millennium until about 2015, and which can be linked by three seemingly unconnected nouns. Gawka on Teen August Harry Potter. Paupert i de may be one of the most retained phrases by the young Irish populace after leaving secondary school, right after Unwil Cadigam Dolgadion Leheris and Pog Mahone. It's just an unfortunate fact that most students lose a lot of their Irish after school due to, among other things, a lack of opportunities to speak it, which makes it funny to me that this quote has essentially become a meme at this stage. You could, if you wanted to be weird, quote this to anyone who did their leaving cert from 2001 to today and probably 9 out of 10 would go, oh yeah, before they start wincing and convulsing in exam PTSD at the thought of going back and studying Brendan Gleeson Gordon down on a slice of strawberry cake and possibly the most revolting eating sequence ever put to screen. Talk Millish is a 2001 Irish language short film which became mandatory to study in the Leaving Cert a few years after its release. It stars Charlotte Brady as Catherine and our boy Brendan Gleeson as blind man Paul as they take a train journey together. This is much to peace and quiet loving Catherine's dismay as she's found herself sitting across from Ireland's most talkative man 2001. The whole short film is less than 20 minutes long, very dialogue heavy and besides one short prologue scene takes place entirely within one train carriage. The film has an excellent uneasy atmosphere and the growing tension between Catherine and Paul is just cringy enough to be enjoyable until the intensely dark twist ending, which I certainly won't spoil here, 
go watch the film. The whole thing is up on YouTube, links in the description. Yes, the film is memed to death, and yes, it kind of loses its impact after studying it for two years, but it's still a thematically interesting and well-directed short film, which I'd actually love to make a video about in the future, but for now, I'll just leave you with this. China. China, China, China. I know it, you know it. Who doesn't love China? Except for this guy, Yu Ming. Isanam Dum is the title of a 2003 short film, which centers around this guy, Yu Ming. Isanam Dum is the title. <laughs> Yu Ming is finding himself bored and unfulfilled with his Groundhog Day life in China and by total chance decides to move to Ireland. Doing his research before moving, our boy gets confused and assumes that being the national language, he'd be fine learning Irish to get around his new life. This was not the case, as from the moment he lands in Dublin, he finds himself totally unable to communicate with the Anglophone population, as though he was speaking, well, Chinese. The film is fun and has a much more lighthearted tone than Cock Millish does. It's essentially a 13 minute build up to one final punchline like Free Churro, only just not in a way which crushes your heart and soul into smithereens. The use of colour is really on the nose but still effective enough and the movie's message likewise doesn't pretend to be subtle in any way, but it does have something to say and does get its point across. And it does have Yu Ming quote Taxi Driver Osquelga which is something which always makes me smile. So why am I discussing these two short films? Well I suppose it's because for most Irish people having left education since the early 2000s, this is all the exposure they'll ever get towards Irish language filmmaking. This is due to a number of factors, not least of which being the visibility of such content. For a long time, unless you actively sought out content to watch in Irish, you could go years or decades without even hearing a word of Irish spoken in a motion picture. Even then, during this time, most options available to you would be dubs of pre-existing films. <laughs> Which brings us back to TG Carr. Besides making one of the most binge-worthy soap operas ever put to screen, T.G. Kahar was, and still is, known for airing dubbed versions of Hollywood films on TV. Most famously, the entire Harry Potter franchise was dubbed in Irish, and it be aired every winter for a few years as the movies were still releasing. There have also been dubs of The Lorax, Happy Feet and Shrek, just to name a few. In the mid-2010s, the Irish dubs of Song of the Sea and Sponge Out of Water were even released theatrically. And look, the fact that we got dubbed content at all, let alone the volume of it, is an achievement in itself. But the problem with dubbing in this way is that eventually the contracts of the studios run out. Once this happens, the dubbed content can no longer be aired, unless it's been recorded or archived, then it becomes lost media. TG Kahar no longer airs Harry Potter during wintertime. You can't buy Spoonch Os Ishka on DVD. And this isn't just a problem with films either, as an infamous example, nearly 200 episodes of South Park were fully dubbed and had been airing on TG Kahar for years. Yet, not one full episode of the dub can be found today, not on TV, not on the internet. And since the broadcasting rights were lost, that's it. Shine. They won't ever be seen again. So yeah, to reiterate, I'll say that from the turn of the millennium until the mid-2010s was a strange period for Irish language film. During this time, more Irish language content was being produced than ever before, yet virtually everything from this period has been erased, archived, or forgotten. All those dubs, Kailcha, Kasul, Le, Jora, E, Marta. As unfortunate as it is, it does make sense that this was the best we could do at that moment in time. If you're making content in a minority language that's spoken daily by just a few tens of thousands of people in a country of 5 million, you have to ask yourself whether it's economically or even artistically viable to produce original cinematic content in that language. How do you make genre films for an audience that's already so niche? Yes, there had been odd successes in the past, decades apart, and which have since largely faded from relevance, but to develop something that resembles an indigenous film industry in the Irish language, a landscape to allow for the production and distribution of numerous Irish language films each year? Well, such a thing was completely uncharted territory. It had never been attempted before in history. Which more or less brings us to today, August, Tauri, Skarniacht Nagelge. So, what does all this mean for the future of Irish language cinema? I don't know. However, we can use more recent exciting developments in this area to try to predict what the future might hold for Irish language films and filmmakers who wish to see their original productions on the big screen. 
and it all begins on May 3rd, 2017. A press announcement from none other than T.G. Cahar pertaining to a new Irish language filmmaking scheme entitled Cine Cahar. The deal? Two Irish language films per year to be given funding by Cine Cahar, which will also have a festival and theatrical release. It does go into detail about a selection process and specific rules about pre-production, film length, project viability, so on and so forth, but the main takeaway is this. Hey, let's cut to the chase. We like films, and we know you like films. So why don't you make your own, you lazy son of a Here's the deal. We're gonna take your applications, we're gonna look through them, and we're gonna see what you've got. Don't be sending us fucking rubbish now. We have a few rules, you see. Firstly, script's gotta be in Irish. Os Gwaelia, on digging shiv. We already tried making movies in English, and see where that got us. Next, keep it snappy, lads. Come on now, this isn't cans. Two hours max, or you're done. Finally, you're not Christopher Nolan, you're not Jordan Peele, and you're not Alfred Hitchcock. Don't even think about directing and producing at the same time. Divvy the workload. No man's an island. Take care of yourself. Hugs and kisses, Sinekar. To summarise, this was enormous. Essentially, five applications would be given a €25,000 development budget, of which two would eventually be chosen and receive a final budget up to €1.2 million. Euros. And keep in mind, this is annually. After decades and decades of virtually no Irish language film industry, finally, here was an opportunity. Hollywood, it is not, but it is something. The first of these films, Arakt, a haunting dive into the mind of an exiled rural farmer during the Great Hunger, was set to release in April of 2020, but due to reasons, was delayed until that winter. And then things really kicked into gear. Arakt, Finky, Fuska and Colin Cuan Dinan, which wasn't even a part of the Sinekar scheme, was the first Irish language film ever made in Northern Ireland. A movie called Tarak has been announced. Rick Spoonsha Rick, the dub of Sponge on the Run, became the first Irish language dub to be released on Netflix. Last month, the movie Rose Yogas Frank came out, which is about a Hurley playing dog who could be the reincarnation of this widow's late husband. This might not seem like a lot when lined up on their own, but it's far better than how we've been doing in the past. But I wanted to quantify that opinion just to be sure. Here, we find ourselves looking at a Wikipedia list of short films, documentaries, and feature films which feature the Irish language in one way or the other. But we're not just looking for films which feature Irish. We don't want some Hollywood blockbuster paying minimal bail growth to Irish. None of this Cade Mila Falcha tomfoolery of The Quiet Man or Brooklyn. So I did my research into these films and for a fair comparison only kept the feature films which gave significant screen time for Irish. And for this, I counted significant screen time as anything more than one full scene where Irish is spoken for the majority. And after all this, I was left with seven movies. Puchin, Bogwoman, Crane Silence, Kings, Unbruntinus, and Penance. The vast majority of these movies have little more than one scene's worth of dialogue in Irish, which makes the recent wave of almost wholly Irish films all the more impressive. In total, since the Sinekar scheme was announced, seven original films have been released, if you want to include Bilingual Black 47. In just five years since this scheme began, we've already matched everything which came in the preceding 50. Now, look, I know my source is Wikipedia and cannot be trusted, but given the lack of literature relating to 20th century Irish language cinema, this is the best we can do for now. But yes, while the output of Irish language cinema may have increased over the past half decade, what about the quality of these films? Sure, you could release 500 films in a year and only two of them could be good, so what's the consensus on these films? Good. Well, for the most part. I think that we're currently at a very pivotal stage with this new wave of cinematic releases in Irish, where filmmakers are still experimenting and seeing what works, and in doing so, not everything is a hit. For me, the standouts since 2017 have been Arakt and Ancolin Cuan, the latter of which I consider to be the most competently directed, produced, and written Irish language movie ever gone down. And I know I'm not alone in that opinion. It's received an excellent reception from critics and the public, has been submitted as Ireland's entry for Best International Feature at the 2023 Oscars, and has been the most commercially successful Irish language film to date, grossing a hair's breadth shy of 1 million euro in the Irish and UK box office. The unprecedented commercial success of On Colleen Cuan has proven, to me anyway, that there does exist an audience ready to see movies in the Irish language and cinemas. The question now is how to maintain that audience. From Arakt to on Colin Cuan, one criticism which has largely been present with these movies is how they tend to meander towards a conclusion, and although a slower pace works for something like Arakt or Fusca, 
I don't think they can maintain this style for long, not if they want audiences to keep coming to see them. I know this most likely has to do with the arbitrary film lengths which have to be met in order to receive funding. It's no coincidence that most of these films barely reach 90 minutes, but I think that now, following the success of On Colleen Kewen, it's time to start thinking of branching out a bit more. Most of these films, like the language they're spoken in, have a shared theme of melancholy, an underlying sense of sadness and loss which permeates even in general discourse surrounding Irish today. I adore these films, most of these films, but I'd love to see more than just slow burn dramas in the Irish language and see the language break this stigma. I like to imagine going to see an Irish language comedy or even a horror movie in the cinema. Heck, if you wanted, go back to where it all began 50 years ago with Putchin and you'll find a decent criminal revenge plot. As I said before, I think that right now is a crucial moment for Irish language cinema. We have undeniable proof now that there is an audience out there who will see movies in Irish, but I firmly believe that to keep the current momentum going, there has to be a movement towards more diverse genres, plots and themes in order to legitimise Irish as a language for all screenwriters and to avoid trapping it in the stigmas which already surround it. We do appear to be stepping in the right direction though, with this year's Rose Yogas Frank seeming to have a far more light-hearted tone than anything Seneca Harris brought out before. I'm so grateful for the developments that have transpired over the past few years. It's led to some of the best cinema experiences I've had in a long time, but I don't want to see it drown in themes of isolation, loneliness and abandonment when there is just so much more that can be offered through this truly exciting new development in my language, which I care about so very deeply. We've come a long way since Putchi and hey, we've come a long way since Kalka Millish and Yu Ming, and in this Jean's opinion, although the future of Irish language cinema seems uncertain at times, Tom Dolchasach Erlaid. We cared a horfi on Tauchi.